The Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra has a pretty ambitious mission. Take smartphone photography to the next level with its massive 200 megapixel camera and take down the iPhone 14 Pro Max and Google Pixel 7 Pro in the process. So what can you do with 200 megapixels? The sensor can combine 16 pixels into one for brighter, more detailed shots, or you can shoot in full 200 megapixel mode, which gives you a lot more freedom when it comes to cropping in and reframing your pics. Based on my extensive S23 Ultra testing, I can tell you that it's definitely one of the best camera phones, even better than the Pixel 7 Pro and neck and neck with the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Shooting in 200 megapixel model also gives you the option to crop in on the image after you shoot, so you can get a completely different looking shot without, ideally, sacrificing detail. I was floored when I took a photo of a Bryant Park surrounded by colorful paper lanterns. Look how much I can crop in on the sign and then the lanterns themselves. In this selfie example, the Galaxy S22 Ultra produces a brighter image of the face, but I appreciate the greater level of detail in the Galaxy S23 selfie, especially in the shirt on the left side. The grass also looks lusher in the S23 Ultra image. You still get dual 10 megapixel telephoto lenses with 3x and 10x optical zoom and a very strong 30x digital zoom option. The 100x space zoom option is also still available, though the results can be shaky. Check out the photos of the Empire State Building ranging from 1x all the way up to 100x. At 3 8 you can make out the steam coming off the top of a nearby building in the freezing cold, then the spire of the building at 10x, and then the windows surrounding the top of the building at 30x. While a bit shaky, it's impressive that you can see the colored lights at 100x. While we're on the subject of zoom, let me just say it's no contest here between the S23 Ultra and Pixel 7 Pro. Samsung's shot of the Chrysler building at 30x is considerably sharper. In this portrait comparison, the Galaxy S23 Ultra delivers crisp detail in blue jacket and hair without blowing out face in the sun like previous Galaxy phones. The bokeh effect is a bit aggressive blurring out the trees, though you can adjust that. By comparison, I'd say the iPhone 14 Pro is a bit too warm, but the Pixel 7 Pro does the best job with face and skin tone. Next, we have a couple of M&M cookies for a close-up food shot. The Galaxy S23 Ultra's colors are oversaturated, while the iPhone 14 Pro's and Pixel 7 Pro's shots look more natural. The difference is that the iPhone's image blurs out the background while the Pixel keeps the whole cookie in focus. Samsung loses this round. For this photo, I wanted to see how the Galaxy S23 Ultra could capture a skating rink while dealing with the sun directly off to the right. The skaters and surrounding buildings look good, but the ice looks blank. The iPhone 14 Pro does a better job showing off the texture in the ice than the Pixel 7 Pro, even though they both exhibit some lens flare. I snapped this photo of bumper cars on the ice rink to see how well the S23 Ultra handles lots of colors. In this case, I think the punchy yellow, red, and blue play to Samsung's advantage, although I prefer the higher contrast and slightly better definition from the iPhone 14 Pro Max. I was pleasantly surprised by the Galaxy S23 Ultra in this photo of the Bryant Park fountain. It's the brightest image of the bunch and does the best job exposing the area right underneath the top part of the fountain, which kind of gets lost in the shadows on the iPhone and Pixel. Though the Pixel better captures the bricks on the building in the background. So how well does the Galaxy S23 Ultra's cameras perform in low light? Quite well, even if it doesn't always beat the competition. Indoors in this photo of a home bar, I'd say it's a toss-up between the S23 Ultra and Pixel 7 Pro. The iPhone 14 Pro Max pick is brightest but also on the fuzzy side. The S23 Ultra is brighter than Pixel, but Google's phone produces more natural-looking colors in the bottles. The Galaxy S23 Ultra fell a bit flat in low light with this photo of a sleeping dog. Check out the more detailed fur in the iPhone's image and in the blanket on the right side. Samsung's photo is a bit blurry by comparison. Photographing fire or candles is tricky for most camera phones, but the Galaxy S23 Ultra renders the frames well here as well as the soot. In this case, warmer is better. The fire's reflection in the glass door looks pretty cool too. The walls in the iPhone's photo are better defined, but I'd rather share the S23 Ultra's image. The pixel's shot is too dim. What do you think about the camera quality of the S23 Ultra's 200 megapixel camera? Comment down below, as always see you in the next video. Peace out.